today's video I will be discussing some Western Electric relays. Western Electric manufactured hundreds, possibly into the thousands, of different types of relays. These relays were primarily used in telephone switching, key telephone systems, and some military control equipment. These were not designed and intended for general purpose use outside of the telecommunications industry. These relays, and I will show some of them individually and give a brief description of the types of relays, an approximate time frame, and what some of the applications that they were used in. There's no way for me or anyone else to make a video to discuss every relay Western made because there are just too many of them. Uh, and I don't only have, you know, probably a few hundred at best of the different types. Uh, and most of it's all in my switching systems or my key systems. The B relay that is on the right hand side of the display is a slow release relay. There's a copper core around the iron core and then there's a copper winding around it. This particular relay was used in a Stroger step switch so that in between dial pulses the relay would not release. So if you apply power to it, and this particular coil is bad, but if you apply power to it and then you remove the power momentarily and then reapply power, the relay would stay operated. The C relay is also a slow to release relay. These are not as common as your standard uh, telephone relays, but they were a special application. They also made relays that were slow to operate. And depending on what circuit they were in, sometimes you needed a relay to operate slower than another relay. And then other times you needed a relay to remain operated while you released a different relay. These uh, were common in Western Electric, Automatic Electric, and ITT step machines. These are Western relays, but ITT and AE look very, very similar, and in most applications were interchangeable. So these are 200 series relay, and they have the 200 series CD, for an example, and then you have the 248, which it, this one's a 248G. Depending on the side of the step switch that these relays are in, uh, typically in a Stroger switch it would be like this. So you have the left side and the right side, and the designation on the relay will tell you if it was a right side relay or a left side relay. Here is a step switch that has six relays in it. The A relay is a loop relay, which has two windings. The B relay is a slow to release. And then you see D, E, and F are standard generic relays. They are different windings and have different contact configuration. Due to the thousands and thousands of different numbers of relays that they manufactured, they had different contact configurations so unless you get the relay with the same exact number the contacts or the winding could be different this particular relay has got several make or transfer contacts as well as break contacts these relays uh, in the original days were all solder and this particular one here has got wire wrap pins on it. So this is a later generation relay. Depending on what the relay was used for, they would have different spring configurations. 
due to the fact that there's gold and palladium on the contacts, they didn't want to have unused contacts. So generally, almost every relay in a step office, uh, the contacts were all used. You would not find spare contacts. If it was a wire spring relay, which I would discuss shortly, that would be a different story. You may find a relay with one or two contacts not used. Depending on what type of a relay, if it was a slow to release, you may have contacts that would make and then other contacts that would break and you would have some contacts that would make before they break some that'll break before they make and then make only and break and that would be on any relay not just a slow release relay so these relays as i said is not found in general um, outside the bell system or the telephone industry in general the two relays we have in the picture right now are much older we have an r type relay that is on the left side and an E-type relay that is on the right side. The E-type relay was generally part of a line circuit in a step-by-step -step machine. However, those relays could be found in trunk units, senders, uh, anything that needed a, small, a relay that had minimal contacts uh, and either single or dual windings. Uh, in this particular case, that A relay has uh, one winding only the r relay has it looks like one winding as well i will show the schematic of some of these uh in the future in this video that uh is in a bell system practice and i will make reference to the practice and it should be available in the telephone collectors international library these are some 280 series relays these relays are very sensitive and can be used for detecting loop current uh, and especially in step-by-step -step for reverse battery applications. These are used primarily in trunk circuits. Um, they have anywhere from one to four different coil windings. Some of them go between a thousand ohm upwards of 30,000 ohms windings. So they're uh, a lot of carrier stuff. These would be connected to for the e &M signaling or DX signaling or loop detection. The rear of the relay has, in this particular case, several contacts because you have contacts for each of the windings. Some of them were designed that you may have one common terminal for two windings and then one individual lead for each of the other side of the winding. Sometimes they would have the contact uh, that was connected to ground also be part of the contact of the um, contact assembly here. These things operate very fast and very sensitive. I will show a couple of trunk circuits that has them in it. This is one of the trunks that I have that I will show different types of the relays and the light loop sensing relay. So we have the 220 series relays and we have some of the E and other type of relays. We also have the 280 relay. And that is used for very sensitive detection, change of state on the circuit. Here are some more sensitive relays in a coin trunk. This is a B-type relay. It is also a very sensitive relay. And this particular one was used on 3CL trunk circuits. And the, this style relay was used elsewhere. So depending on what they were attempting to do and the vintage of the equipment, this was also a sensitive loop relay. Here are two U-type relays. One of them that has the metal box around it, which is used to reduce crosstalk on voice circuits. 
and then you have the relay that is just a general purpose switching relay. They made these relays, of course, slow to release, slow to operate, many, many different contact configurations and lots of different coil configurations. Most of your general purpose telephone relays in step-by-step -step systems are 650 ohms up to 900 ohms. Now they do have, of course, uh, single 200 ohm and less and then dual winding 200 ohms and up 400 ohms as well and then into 12, 1500 and 3000 ohms. So there's quite a, a spread of different resistances and contact configurations. These particular relays were found more commonly in step-by-step -step systems. However, I believe in the early number five crossbar markers, they might have used these types of relays. Um, so, and also I've seen them in a lot of trunk circuits, uh, both step and crossbar. This is the back of the two relays. And again, these particular ones are uh, saw or wire wrap and the old R relays and E relays are all solder and the pins on them are much different. Here's two R relays. Uh, one is made to go on relay plates with um, other relays side by side under one single can cover. And then the one that's marked A is a single relay that's intended to be mounted somewhere on a circuit plate that's not covered with a common cover. And again, they're both the same relay. It's just depending on the... Uh, application needed if it had its own individual cover or not. Here are two different types of mercury relays. These are for ultra sensitive uh, loop configurations or change of states. These things operate very quickly and they are very sensitive and they generally have high ohm windings. These again are used in loop sensing circuits or something where you have a change of state that's happening very quickly and you need to detect that change of state. This particular relay here is a taller relay. It is a uh, 275A and it has a tube socket type of a base. And then we have a rectangular relay this was often found in the ESS switching machines, number one ESS, number two, uh, and number possibly number four toll machine. And it has a plug-in socket. They also made these exact relays that were wire wrap pins that were not intended to be changed out without actually unwiring them. And I would say most of the step-by-step -step equipment I have that has this and the number three crossbar machine, I've never had to replace a relay. These are the wire spring relays. The wire spring technology replaced all of the other relays for the most part uh, because these operated much faster, they were much more reliable, and you could put more contacts in a smaller space. This particular relay uh, was used in trunk circuits, number five crossbar switching machines, any additional growth jobs to number one crossbar switching machines, and then in step-by-step -step and toll equipment. I have an automatic number identifier that is full of these and I will make a quick call through my step switch so you can see them working. I have here one Japanese made relay and a, this was licensed off of the Western Electric patent and several manufacturers made relays that are interchangeable with one another. Northern Electric, which was Bell of Canada, also made the wire spring relays, as well as all of the other relays previous in this video, Northern made as well. So this here is a 20 contact. It's a 20 make only 
actually it's not true it's a 24 make so you got 12 and 12 so 24 make only and then we have this particular relay here is a ring trip relay and i will show the winding on that and it only has one contact and then we have a relatively gp wire spring relay that has all um 10 contacts you got five in the bottom five in the top and these are transfer the thing about western relays or telco relays in general depending on the card here some contacts like this one here these contacts the last three will make last these two contacts here will make first when that relay is actually operated and also too depending on how the card is notched out some contacts will open before other contacts we're only talking about milliseconds we're not talking about long term uh, thing so depending on the number that's stamped on the relay and this is what's called an ak4 and you'd have to look in the, the chart with all the thousands of relays and it would give you every bit of specification that there is for that relay the winding uh, coil windings and so forth so this is two relays in one single package and then you have here with this one one relay in just a single package however this is an ac relay so this is intended to be used in a ringing circuit so it will not chatter during the ringing of the phone because your phone is ringing on 20 or 30 cycles um, so with it being ac current the relay would chatter but this particular one is designed not to so once it's operated it will remain operated even though the polarity of the, of the ac is going positive negative positive negative and then this here is used this particular one was used in a marker in a Japanese PBX and it has a, a small winding and this was intended to operate very, very fast. Again, they made all kinds of different uh, configurations and this was also used where you only needed to make a whole bunch of contacts um, instead of transferring circuits. So this was kind of like scanning input leads from registers or so forth. This is a wire spring relay that was used exclusively in the number one ESS, number two ESS, number three ESS machines. They have it uh, labeled as an AM series. And this relay does the same thing, it has different contact configurations and different coils. And they did make the relays, the full relays such as uh, this one right here <clears throat> the difference is this relay is in t it's a magnetic latching relay in a number one ESS number two and number three they would send out uh, a negative 48 volt pulse to latch the relay then when it was time to unlatch the relay they would send out a positive 24 volt pulse to knock it down. The intent was to reduce the power consumption. So if you needed a relay to be held operated for a long period of time, then it was drawing current if you did an electrical latching circuit. Using a magnetic latching circuit, they just sent out a pulse, they operated the relay, and then they sent out a pulse of the opposite polarity to knock it down. Well, these relays are relatively useless for most applications that collectors and hobbyists would have. And you'll notice there's resistors across the coils uh, and there's a common coil. So you need positive 24 volts and negative 48 volts to make this relay work. And again, it only needs to be a pulse. The relays that were the larger series, um, instead of being a dual relay, two relays in one package, we had one, they would just have a single resistor across the coil. 
Here's two AK-5 relays and one little mounting uh, unit. This was some custom application that I tore apart that I got a long time ago. But it's good for if I wanted to do a build up, I can, and I only needed two relays. This is a good metal bracket for holding them. This is a 400 line card. This has the M series wire spring relays on it. These relays were used by uh, the same type of relay, form package was licensed to many other manufacturers that manufactured equipment in the telecom industry. Uh, the 1A ESS had trunk units, it had millions of these things on it, as well as the ESS office had huge amounts of, of the M type relays and your 400 series, your 1A2 key telephone intercom units and some of the special service uh, cards had these kind of relays. These are the most common that the uh, phone collectors would find unless you're into the switching equipment. This relay right here is the loop sensing relay for the 400 type line card. That is not a mercury relay, that is just a reed relay in a under a metal can. They also made lots of different types of those relays. Here are some 30 point make only type of uh, relays. They're called a 286 relay. They were used in number five crossbar by the thousands. They're used in the number three crossbar machine, which is where I'm looking at right now. This was typically a marker connector relay or any relay or application where you needed 30 make contacts. To the best of my knowledge, these are all 48 volt relays. Here are some reed pack relays. There's five relays in each of these metal cans and they're single contact only. These were used for storage of information. In this case, this is storing information for a register circuit, and they were used in the five crossbar and the number three crossbar, as well as other circuits that required storing of digits. This is typically for the two out of six format. Here are some more read relays, just a different configuration. Here is some of the marker connector relays in my number three crossbar switching system. Not as impressive as looking at the marker connector relays of a number five crossbar system. This is the marker in my number three machine and I'm just scanning it to show you how many different types of wire spring relays and how many hundreds of them could be in a piece of equipment. And this, is, of course, is a very small marker. And number five crossbar is, marker is 11 and a half foot tall, 23 inches wide for the dial tone marker, and has relays from the floor to the top of the bay. The two relays with the metal covers over it are the crosstalk relays. This is one of the intercoms in the number three crossbar switch, referred to as an IAO. Here is the back of the marker so this is the wiring interconnect wiring cables that goes to other parts of the switching machine the red and green wires and black wires is some of the interconnecting between relays within the marker and this is the rear of the marker connector relays The trunk plates that has the blue wire on it are the ones that I had to rewire in order to change the type of a trunk from an E&M trunk to a loop trunk for the number three crossbar. As you can tell, most of the trunk circuits and relay circuits that were not wire spring, they had can covers that covered the majority of the relays. This was to keep them clean. The back of some of the 
circuits that uses the relays. For this particular thing that we're looking at, it's the office alarm system. The rear of a step switch. This has been refurbished and the capacitors were changed out. Here is the books showing the different relay windings for different types of relays. The types of relays are listed down below and they just show the contact, the coil uh, configurations and the contact configurations. This is the BSP section on some of the relays. This does not cover all relays.